Welcome back guys, today we're going to be looking at two point perspective. I have here uh, a drawing that I'll be putting up on the website and taking a look at. Um, it is a multi-story sort of architectural drawing that is done in two point perspective. Um, and I'm going to be recreating this without a ruler. You can use a ruler, but I just thought I would use it without a ruler because I thought I'm, I don't know. Maybe it's just a little bit more torture, but um, oftentimes in class I don't want you guys using a ruler and I wanted to show you how it's done. So let's get started. Um, we're going to assume this is a three story with an outdoor pool and a patio and a stairway that goes down to something lower. There is a horizon line here that's at a slight angle. Um, maybe it's not at a slight angle, that's just the way I'm sitting here. It sits on a horizon line that is parallel with the tops and bottoms of the pages. And there is a berm that comes down here, and the berm actually um, comes up over to, it, it, it basically, it, it's what this house sinks into. So somewhere in there, there's a flight of stairs that goes up and a flight of stairs that go down. I don't know what's with these little slats in here. This kind of looks like a microwave oven. Someone got a little bit too uh, modern with it, a little too uber modern with it. So it's a little, it's a little, we can change it and maybe I'll change it and I give you guys the option to change it but for the most part when we're done We're gonna have a three-story building with a pool and a deck um, And you can add background in if you want all right, so first things first We want to create that horizon line. I'm gonna go ahead and just extend this horizon line right across the paper And off the edge of the camera here um, Right about here. It's gonna be um, a point of perspective. Now if I move my pencil around here I can see that there is a, a right there's a perspective line roughly about here from what this illustration is and over here it looks like there's gonna be another one that is almost about an inch off so maybe right where my thumb is over here so I will put that right here, right at the edges of the paper, and that'll leave me more room in the middle to build this. Um, in fact, this is probably too spread out, so what I'll do is I'm going to make the top of mine, I'm not drawing mine to scale, you can do yours to scale if you want, but save yourself a little bit of grief, a little bit of struggle, keep things at um, sight side, which means the same size, side by side, but I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see it. Um, I'm using a I'm going to use an HPE like I always do here on the line so that I can see it. Um, I'm going to grab it. And here we go. Alright, so one line here and I'm going to have it coming out about here at that angle. That's going to be this roof. It might even be a little bit um, more upright. In fact, it, it's probably more upright to here. But that's good for now. And then if I follow this edge down, it'll go all the way to the pool. So I can just add that in. And this is not what I'm doing here is I'm trying to keep my lines parallel to the edges of my sketch pad here. Okay. And really, this this corner of the house here, and the, uh, on the out overhang, on the outer side, and the inner side, they're not on the same line, but they're close. In fact, and if I bring this straight down, it, it hits the edge of the pool, most coincidentally. So, um, as we come further down here, I'm going to go ahead and draw another line, just from here to. Let's see if this is two stories. This is two stories put a mark for this point and this point here, so that's zero, that's the horizon, that's the top of the first story, and maybe it's a little bit shorter, and that's the top of the second story. These are estimates to get going. Uh, things move around, and right off the bat, now I have a crosshair, so okay, uh, usually say if you're not working with the envelope and blocking, make sure you're working with the crosshair, because it makes things a lot easier. So now we're going to follow the edge of this house all the way down to the pool, and the pool goes down one story. So the distance from here to here, here, and the edge of that pool will be about here. So I'm going to draw another diagonal line going right through there. And I would use a ruler. I encourage you guys to use a ruler. 
um, uh, if you want it to be really accurate. Okay, so um, how far over, down, over does it come? I would say maybe this far to pull. That's about right, pull. And if I bring over that line here, it looks like it will actually go all the way over here. So I'm gonna draw another line to here. And I'm going to start trying to get the outline of the house. Um, so this is the pool edge. This is complex. So let's start, let's just start with the top. So as we start from the top, here's the first layer, the first story, second story, and there's going to be a line that comes from here to here. Um, what's from here to here? Sorry, nope, that's not right. Get my bearings on this. So another line will come from here to here. And that'll be this inner line, and I'll make the width of the building go back to here. And this comes down, and it'll come all the way down. Alright, so this is both first and second story. And there's the inner hang here. Okay, this isn't a very sharp pencil, but for this drawing, that's okay. I can add more information in later if I want. Um, there's the first story, and then then the plane shift happens, so it goes over a little bit about the same distance. And it comes up. How far up? Well, we know that that is this corner here, so let's go ahead and connect this line to the vanishing point. Long sweeping lines. Okay, and then there is the top of that here. Sort of, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight old toaster on its side. Um, and then this comes down here to separate the two sides. And I'm not going to worry too much more than that right now. Um, what I, the next thing I want to do is bring this edge, this edge in, and then it'll come back up. So it's going to come in just a little bit past here. So if, see this edge comes up, and then it comes over to the top of the second story. So this line comes up and comes over to the top of the second story. So I'll have it come to here. This comes down, but all lines go between. So long sweeping lines. And I'm trying to keep my eye as to where my pencil is going and not paying attention to the middle. Some of them wave, but um, you can clean that line up and it'll leave a fairly straight line. And that is where this point is. And this uh, story ends and comes down into the balcony. Um, and then what happens is that there's a bit of a... I'm going to actually just extend this... Um, a little bit down. Um, how should I do this? Thinking out loud here as I do this. Uh, I guess I will just create it in another little portion there. So I'm going to put a little gap in here, keeping this. Um, I guess I could draw the bottom of the balcony first because that's pretty clear to me what's going on. So there's the edge of the building. And then the balcony is going to come straight out. So from here to here is the balcony edge. I want it to come out about that far. And then I'll have it recede to the other vanishing point. And I'll have it come out to about here. That's about right. It feels about right to me. The distance maybe of that times this distance times almost two would be where almost two come out to about here. Maybe one and a one point seven five. Um, don't quote me on that. Okay, and then the top part, which is is acting as two parts here. One, it's an overhang for the lower, the first story balcony, and it's also off uh, working as a uh, balcony um, uh, for a for the third for the upper story. Maybe that's the master bedroom. Um, there's another line right about here and that will vanish to this vanishing point it comes out and I'll keep it on the same plane 
and I'll bring it over. And it ends right about here. So I'm gonna have it end right, again, path maybe two thirds of the way. If that's one side and that's the other side, then this line is about two thirds in. So one side, the other side, about two thirds is where that upper story ends. And then right about here, I'm gonna have the roof come out. And I'll add another line from here. I want it to stick out pretty far. So let's have it come out to about here. Just past, this is the edge of the first floor and that's the overhang for the second floor, the roof. So it makes sense that it would go over the edge uh, so that it would, so that rain would fall over it. So I'll have it come out a little bit further. Maybe I'm not going to use inches because, depending on the scale you're building, it's not going to really be inches. I'm going to try and use um, percentages or um, fractions so you guys get an idea of scale, relative scale. So let's do another uh, straight line coming out of the vanishing point and. If I go straight up and over from the right portion of the second story, straight up and right over, that's where it's going to end. They end almost at the same at the top of the drawing. So if that uh, one's going to end here, the other one will probably end about here. So that's good. I can, um, if yours goes off the edge of the paper, that's fine. Um, it's not fine if half of the drawing goes off the edge of the paper. You'll need to restart. I'm talking about a little bit of a clip here and there that doesn't quite make it. That's fine. Not half your drawing. Uh, so you need to need to plan that out a bit better if that happens. Um, from the first vanishing point here on the left, I'll bring another line up to the corner of my roof, and then I'll bring another one up. Um, how far down do I want it to come? Looks like it's just in. So the left section here of the second story, and then in from the right side of it. So left section and then the right side and then in. So that's where I'm gonna have that come down. Uh, so that gets dark into there and then this will, need to clean up some of my lines better, but cleaning up a line, I got distracted. So from here, I will have another line come up through to about there. And then I'll have this other line draw another line separate that comes further out to about there. Okay, so that's the, this is the outline of the roof now. Oop, I'm not drawing it very straight, am I? Okay, let's clean that line up. And I'm gonna switch over to a sharper pencil. Sharp pencils make sharp drawings. Uh, I heard that somewhere. It's kind of cheesy, but it's true. If you have a dull pencil, you're not going to be able to get in the sharp details. And the sharp details are what make a drawing sing. And with perspective, sharp lines are needed so that you actually get an accurate drawing. All right, so the overhang is going to come over about that far. So there is the outside of the roof. And then if I bring that roof in, yeah, it's a lot of back and forth with your ruler. One of the reasons why I don't want to use it, but it does mean I still have to be accurate and true to the perspective points. Okay, so now I have an outline. I go up, under, left side, right side, under, and then the balcony. So left side, under, the roof, left side, right side of the roof, under, end of the uh, second story here. And then um, looks like the, the balcony comes out. Okay, so the balcony's gonna come down to the first floor, and I'm gonna draw this as a straight line. There's a lot of little separations of detail in here. You are welcome to add them in. I am not gonna add them in for this first version of the drawing that I am creating. I'm trying to get this done so that you guys can follow along or at least create this at home. Because since I'm not here Friday, um, this is your this is your direct drawing course. Okay, so I'm going to have 
the edge of this balcony, the first floor comes out a bit. Like, so whatever this is, if that's the stairs or the mudroom where you enter, maybe it's the garage for your futuristic flying motorcycle or whatever, it doesn't go all the way to the end of this uh, first living area here. So it comes out. And the only way to draw it coming out is by the perspective above. So I'm going to draw another line that looks like it would go in between the, in between the left and right sections of the top floor. So the line here in between, those and the right, left and right in between them. And that will come straight up here. Um, and I will add a little bit of thickness only to this patio because it is it is not um, it, 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 there's a bend in it. It doesn't just come down and there's no support there. So this line comes straight down to here. Now I have Have that first floor and maybe over here it's open and this is just a support but because this is kind of I don't know why you would do that unless you unless you got like direct sunlight coming in in the early morning or late at night and you're just blasting that room full of heat um, so that's why they put that wall in architecturally maybe they just did it because it was cool but really if you wanted to you could wipe out that wall and just have it so that the first, the second story sits right on top of the first story, and we already have a line there. It looks like that I'll use for the top of the first floor, and there it is. And if I did want to make it just a beam, then obviously this overhang would would come back to here, and that's a little bit more interesting to me. And that's just a like a weight bearing support there. So I've changed it a little bit. You're welcome to change it a little bit. Um, okay, now the, the sub layer, the bottom left floor, which is like the, the sub layer, because you take stairs into it. This was a one story, this would be your underground basement. Your, um, your den area, but because it's on a hillside, they have three stories of a view. So I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna keep it so that the support is consistent. I'm just bring that edge down, the same height, because um, this is whatever I'm looking at. My I'm looking at the horizon line. So therefore, this height will be the same as this height if they have the same dimensions. You can make them higher or lower. Maybe the den has a lofty ceiling or a raised ceiling. Um, Okay, so I'll make it the same height, and then I'll add more perspective lines in. And it looks like, yeah, that works to there. So I'll have this, and I want to bring maybe the same as, as the the same depth into the same dimensions. And there's an edge, and there's gonna be an edge. So this comes down to here. And it looks like it's going to this corner shoot back to you again. Perspective line. You know, there's a hill there. That perspective line stays true. The math is absolute. Perspective lines are there for a reason to help us find our bearings in the real world, especially when we're drawing architectural plans or floating around in a computer game, so that we know where we're at, what we're looking at. Okay, so there's the edge. There's the top, and there's the bottom. Great. Uh, so let's draw some of the inside detail. It looks like there might be a pool changing room. Maybe there's a shower down here. Kind of um, So it's going to come down from the inside and over. Every line goes from one point to the other. You guys have heard me say it in class over and over, but now you get to see me do it too. There's no escaping. It's either up or down, or it's one line back and forth. And I have another one here. 
and then it goes back for a distance and then it'll come up in. So now this is all one plane here. These are pillars here, which I can include or omit. Um, well, I'm gonna, it's like I'm omitting them for now. And then, then there's another perspective line where the back of this house really sits in here. And I'm gonna, again, skipping the details of the windows. I will put in a few big windows when I'm done, but not all of that detail. Big picture is more important right now. Being able to see all this stuff is more important. Okay, so that's the edge of my pool. That's the edge of my pool. My perspective is already a little bit off, but that's okay. So I'm gonna have the edge of the pool come all the way to about here. And that too will follow a line of perspective. So my pool will come to here. Looks like it goes right up underneath the bottom of this subfloor. The sub, uh, you know, bottom, the bottom story. And I'll come around the edge. Uh, a little bit, not as far over as here, is how recessed in the actual indoor space for the subfloor is. It comes out a little bit. Comes out a little bit. So that's the edge of the pool. And this is the top of the pool, so I'll have it come here, all the way out to this line here. And then that's the pool area. Um, I'm gonna, I mean, I can work with it, but I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrow or to match this. So, to make it more narrow, I'm gonna have another line coming from here. So, that will be one floor, and that will be where the pool comes down. So, I'll erase out that line. Not with you, even though I didn't press very hard. And then this line will come out to, I'm going to keep this line here, and it'll come up, get rid of this line, and that should take care of my problem. So let's see, try not to smudge my original, all my pencil lines, always get a piece of paper under your hand so that you're not dragging your finger back and forth, and you get them all, you know, that, that's me dragging my hand across your smearing, so not ideally. You always cover it with a piece of paper so that it doesn't smear. Um, I've seen some people put band-aids on their fingers. It sounds wasteful to me. Like, you're going to reuse that band-aid so you're not, like, throwing it away. Poor whale swallowing and all. Um, piece of paper is easy. You just put it on top. This piece of scratch paper I have goes here. Now I can move my hand all the way around here. The bottom drawing, as long as this doesn't, top layer doesn't move, that uh, the bottom won't smear and I don't get anything else on my hand. Okay, but for the sake of this video so you can see it all, I will keep it off and try to float my hand more carefully. Okay, so that's the top edge of the pool. Comes into here. Comes, I'm gonna draw an outer wall on it on this side. It comes out and then straight down. And then you get an eraser and excuse this eraser. And we need to have a corner here. And we'll have an inner wall for the pool. And these lines are all very close together. I would use a ruler for it. Um, their vertical lines come down so that you have the water here. You can draw reflections however you want. Sometimes you can just draw squiggly lines where there's other major parts. Um, just so it kind of represents the form breaking and the water reflects everything, but simply doing it is a nice way to do it. You don't want to, especially with um, architectural drawings, you don't want to overdo them. The designs are mostly there to show the whole tell the whole story of the building with the pool not it's not about the pool also if this were an underpainting for a, a draw uh, an underdrawing for a painting sorry about that an underdrawing for a painting you may do again you don't need much detail you just need enough so that you can when you start painting it you'll have more information um, 
you can add more information later. All right, so the back edge of this um, house, I'm gonna add another line that comes out from here. I'm adding this back balcony for the bottom, the bottom. I'm gonna draw two lines close together on both of them. Here. So here's the top rail. It turns. It comes into this layer, this rail. There's a lot of information here, so I'm gonna try and skip that. It's a vertical line that comes all the way down. How far down? Well, if that's the bottom of the pool. bottom of the pool and then and now I'm just finishing up with this deck this is stairs that go down into something else. And I'm just gonna have the deck end and I'll put the other end of this fence here. So that that's my drawing. It's um there's a lot going on there. So let's get the horizon line in and some details. Um oops. and I'll just make this a little bit more dirt is uneven. There's no point in drawing it super straight. And then the hill obviously starts coming down. It comes right behind the pool. And then it comes over the edge of the pool. So that's why you lose the back corner of the swimming pool. And I can start erasing all of my support lines now. And this is kind of the satisfying part because especially if you ink it, which you guys can do, you can totally ink it at this point. It's a lot of extra work, but it, you know, if you're proud of your drawing so far and you want to see it sing, totally ink it. And then let the ink dry. Wait at least 10, 15 minutes for the ink to dry, especially considering you're doing ink over um, pencil. It takes longer to seep into the, into the paper itself. Okay, so there's earth, moving to the house, around the edge. Okay, and then I have this of the hill here comes over. And if I wanted to add some trees, you guys know how to. You, I've told you how to draw trees, so um, trees are kind of squiggly, random shapes. You trace over and you go a little bit slower over the second layer and it creates a tree edge. And that's one tree. And then maybe there's another one next to it. This is part of the landscaping that's going into it. It's a different designer, landscape design, or landscape architect if you're here in California. Those are different careers here in California. Racing more of my support lines. And we are just about a half an hour into this exercise. So that should have been enough time for you guys to get your drawing done and pause it, double check it. Okay, um, maybe I'll have a tree, maybe I'll have a couple of, uh, a tree right here, kind of comes out, maybe it's like a Japanese maple, those are beautiful trees, um, and then I'll sort of sit here, maybe some shrubs around the edge of the house. the time people just draw this for shrubs and some designers do this so you can show different textures of simple trees they just become variable as for trees so if you were talking to your designer you'd say oh these are little succulents and cactuses and this would be a head this would be a Japanese maple and these over here would be like I don't know some sort of pine all right so windows, um, I'm going to leave them out, but what I am going to do is one last step here, just so you can have, I can show you more about my drawing, is I'm going to shade it, and always, always shading considering the light source first. My light source is coming from the upper, oops, can you guys see that on the paper? I think it's 
too far off the edge, isn't it? My lighting is coming from this edge here. Light source. Which means that everything on the far edge will be shaded. I'm not too worried about the trees. I'm mostly only interested in showing this light. Um, okay, that was open there, but this has shading on it down here. That's for privacy. So coming in out of the pool, maybe you just don't want people to see you. And then side of the house here. I'm not even putting the shadows right now. I'm only shading very simply put in an architectural style of plan. this back fence. Okay, so very simple shading. Don't smear it, don't smudge it. You guys know I, I do not like it when you smudge in pencil. You can smudge in charcoal, you can smudge in all kinds of medium, but smudging in pencil it just, it's just it doesn't create, you don't have the amount of control and it doesn't look as good as you think it does. And frankly, it's a good way to, I mean, people may disagree with me, but I, I don't care. It's a good way to ruin the time you spent. If you want to color this or shade it, you can do it well with pencil, or you can move into watercolor, you can transfer it, and you can paint, you can transfer it, and you can charcoal, and charcoal, man, you can smear to your heart's desire. Charcoal is beautiful when you smear it. Alright, so I'm not, that's it, that's all I'm going to do. I didn't even do the underhang here for the roof. Um, I could do shading on the underhang here, but really I just wanted to show the dimension of, of this drawing. Maybe I'll put another couple plants here so you can see this area of the house is open. Alright, we got the sunset coming in here. So that's it. That's my drawing. I will post the original on it on the website on Google Classroom. Um, that's about it. If you guys want to add more stuff into it, you can. You can add your windows. Windows go in here. Um, I think I want I want a pretty big panoramic window on the top floor here. Um, there's going to be pretty big sliding windows up top here. Um, and again over here, maybe they'll have a round window or a stained glass window. That's a little bit more interesting. Um, down here, oop, kick the camera, what do you know? Down here, I'm going to leave that. Um, there could be sliding doors, so maybe I'll put a couple vertical lines. Might be even steeper. Um, and here we'll have another sliding door. Open, pretty open plan. Lots of light getting in to this house. Have it separated into sections. And the top one needs to be fixed so it's not, it follows the perspective a bit better. All right, so in a quick review, We've created a three-story house with a pool. This is a, uh, an architectural drawing that requires two points. Perspective, one, two. That means that anything that shows scale will go back to one or two points. And everything else will be either parallel with the ground here or will be vertical up and down. All right, enjoy this. Uh, let me know how it works for you. I'd use a ruler. Save yourself from grief. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.